Hi guys, it's Blackie again. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to talk about the cowboy bedroll. Now, a month or so ago, maybe two months ago, I did a video talking about the cowboy bedroll and what my thoughts were on it. And I had several people reach out to me and talk to me about it. So I'd like to kind of share some further thoughts on it. I had a good friend of mine uh, that has recently, in the last six months, bought an actual official cowboy bedroll. He went through some sort of saddle, harness, horse stuff supply and found the guy that's making these. And it's a very high quality piece of gear. But let's talk about what is the cowboy bedroll. One, these were bedrolls that were usually carried either tied across the back of a horse or a pack animal or in the, the chuck wagon usually. That whenever the main camp was set up near a cow herd where the cookie was at, you'd come up there and they would probably have tents pre-set up and you'd grab your bedroll and that's what you rolled out to get into at night. Now in certain cases there were no tents and you just had to roll out on the wet ground or whatever. That's what it was, depending on what you were doing. Okay. But classically what it was made up of was very heavy canvas sailcloth that was basically virtually waterproof. And that's the reason back in the actual Old West they used that type of stuff because that's what they had available that worked well. And it was either be waxed, tarred, or in some way sealed heavy canvas. And that made the outer skin. And then inside of it went some sort of pad. In the original days, it would have been some sort of tick with cotton or grasses or whatever that you gathered as it wore out and compressed and got no good anymore, you'd place, went inside of it. And then on top of that would be your big old heavy duty Whitney type blanket, okay? Why did they choose those blankets? They're loft. Let me show you what loft is right quick. Loft is how actually thick the blanket itself is. And these are a very thick blanket. Dense weave, very thick, and they're not waterproof, but they'll shed water real well. So even if you're wrapped up in a driving rainstorm, you'll stay fairly warm because wool holds warmth very well. And I have made that statement before and been challenged on it. It's not just Blackie saying it. The U.S. government says that because back in the early 19-teens, they did an in-depth study on what to use for the soldiers in the field, and they concluded that wool retained 80% of their warmth, even sopping wet. That's the reason most of the armies around World War I, all the uniforms were wool, all their blankets were wool, all their coats and stuff were wool, that's why. Because even in those conditions, you had a better chance with wool sopping wet than you did with any other material at the time. And so these cowboy bedrolls utilize that. Now my friend paid around $350. That's a hunk of change for a sleeping bag. Okay. And his modern version is a very heavy canvas duck that, it, that you have to sew, fold those seams over, sew them, and then fold them again and sew them so water cannot wick in sideways into the bag. This has to virtually be waterproof so that if you're having to lay in a driving rain, you'll be dry inside of it. That was the idea. Or laying on already wet ground, you could lay down on it, and it would be like a bathtub around you. The padding inside of his is a one-inch thick, dense foam pad. Okay? And then the actual cover inside of it is a heavy wool blanket like that that's been sewed to the inside of it. So you will open it up and wiggle into it like a sleeping bag. Really nice work. And of course the top comes up and folds over so you can fold it over you to protect your head. Very nice. But that was $350. Is there a modern option that I can do basically the same thing for cheaper and better? More like you and I and common man can do it. Well, I think so. Now, I already have my big heavy-duty blanket, and this is an expensive blanket. But 
U.S. Army blankets or some of the military polypro blankets or stuff would serve as well, as well as a sleeping bag. But let's begin with, we need the outer cover to begin with. We need something that's going to be waterproof, something that we can get in and out of easily. So even if it's by itself, I have to lay it down on damp ground, water ain't going to wick up through it. Nor is it going to allow, if I get into rain or something coming on top of it, or if we're just using a, a common lean-to and it's going to blow in the side, it's going to get me wet. So I need something that gives me that kind of protection. And the modern version of that is a U.S. military bivy cover. This is Gore-Tex. It's a whole lot flexible and lighter than my friend's canvas thing, but it's roughly the same size. So, when I lay it out like this, the hood in it has a shock cord or a cord I can pull up to cinch it up like a sleeping bag around my head. There's a great big patch right there of Velcro and on the inside of the lips of the part so I can reach up and hook that and leave air from either side so when I'm laying on either side I'm getting fresh air. But at the same time it covers over the entire outside. So if it's raining or whatever it's going to run away from me. So it's not going to get on me. Okay. There are snaps running down the side and there's a zipper which is going to unzip oh, about three quarters of the way down. So I have a snap, like my friends is just a tube you got to wiggle into. I have a snap I can pull it over and snap it so I can vent a little bit. You know, I can just put like two snaps and there as I move, I get a little too warm, I can move and get some cool air. Right? This is going to be okay to lay down on the damp ground. It's Gore-Tex. It's also going to be alright to lay there in a mist or even rain. I'm going to be okay. So now I need some sort of padding underneath me. Now my friend's got that one inch thick pad that's sewed into it. I'm going to go with a Thermarest self-inflating mat. Put it right there. Put it in. Roll it all the way to the bottom. Open up. Let it self-inflate. Take these buckles and straps and just tuck them up here in the head out of the way. Couple of quick breaths, close the valve. Now it fits in there just fine. And that gives me that one inch thick pad right there. But even better, this is sealed. So any water that might have leaked some magic way where I got a little hole in it, that's going to be waterproof for me to lay on now, ain't it? So I've added padding and another layer of water protection and thermal protection as well as getting me a little bit off that ground. Now like we talked about in my last video in ground pounding I believe it was, I'm going to go ahead and dig out an area for my hips and for my shoulder to lay into. So when I lay down on my bed, I'm more contoured to my body and I get a more comfortable night's sleep as opposed to like jacked up like that. Now I'm also going to need a cover element. So like I said, we can take the blanket and put it in here. But let me give you a little bit of my experience in doing something like this. What you want to do is you want to take your blanket and open it up and take one of the edges, the far edge, and you want to tuck it under that side about that far, about a foot under that entire far side. Then take the bottom, tuck it under the sleeping pad, and then up to about your knee, tuck it under. That will leave all the slack to the top. Now when I get into it and I lay down, I'm just going to zip it, fold it up, I'm going to get in there, I'm going to put my legs in. And then I'm going to pull it up over me. When I do, I'm going to roll to this side, and I'm going to take my hand and grab the blanket and kind of tuck it up under that sleeping pad 
then roll it over and tuck it under here. I want all the slack material on top. That way, as I roll over during the night, it's always draped around me. And I'm not pulling it and bunching it up. If I don't do that, if I try to lay it flat across the top and me lay into it, it's going to bunch up up under me. And I'm therefore going to wake up with all my blankets watered up in one corner and me cold. Or a big old knot in my ribs where I've got a big old water blanket. I've learned from experience about this of sleeping on the ground. Tuck it under the end, tuck it under the foot, tuck it halfway up. When I get in here, reach and pull this up and tuck it under this side so that it is secure up there. Take the excess, drape it up to my head. I don't have to necessarily go over my head, but I can drape it up beside my head as a wind draft, okay? And I then would pull this over. Now for this demonstration, we're just gonna lay it in here. I would then, like I said, then for snap. Now the advantage of this military type, let me show you that right quick. This bivy cover already has two zippers on it and the snaps, see? So I can snap a sleeping bag into this, the military MS sleeping system, as well as there is a snap on this to go to the outside. So I can just snap this closed and leave this open if it's kind of warm and I'm just needing the rain cover and dew cover, but I want air. And see, it's got this lip. The lip will drape over so I don't get any water running into the bag. So this is already set up to be a cowboy bedroll. As well as, it's got the twin zippers, which means I can unzip the foot to vent if I need to, etc. Just like a sleeping bag or just like a cowboy bedroll. Okay, so now I can zip this up to right here. I then have the head right here that I can pull this shock cord on this side and cinch it up around my head, leaving that patch available. And all I gotta do is just stick it like that and it's gonna drape all the way around me and keep me dry. At the same time, it's gonna trap warmth and keep my warmth next to me. Now, what else should I add to this to add a little bit more comfort? How about one of them climate inflatable uh, pillows right quick? This weighs nothing. Take it out of the bag and lay it flat and put it in this. Just leave it in there. I can zip this up except for this very top. That lets air get out. So I can put it right there. Maybe I don't want to use that blanket. Maybe I want to use this. This is a down sleeping bag. This is a north face down sleeping bag. But it's not ready to be out all by itself. But with that bivy cover and that thermal rest pad, Suddenly I got a ground pounding set that is in, in essence a cowboy bedroll right there. Now, I can just roll this up. I do not have to completely break the components back down again. I can just roll it up. If I take, now, remembering I got that inflatable pad in there. I come right here, open it up to let the air out now. Squeeze that air out as I go. So, I have a cowboy bedroll. Those outer covers are $75 to $100 a piece on the surplus market right now. And yes, Kaufman's and Sampson does have some. I know some people are going to ask. On the other hand, what goes in it? A thermal rest pad? I probably already got that, or I can pick one up surplus. Fairly cheap. How about the blanket? I either already have a really good blanket or I can substitute a sleeping bag I already have into that. 
see. Add in a pillow or improvise a pillow, whatever it is. I can get the cost of this down to like 150 bucks if I shop around and find a good heavy quilt. How about one of them down comforters? Here's a little trick I'll pass on to you. Go around the uh, dry cleaning places. Usually in the spring is a real good time. And ask, have you got any down comforters that nobody picked up? You'll be amazed how many people will take in down comforters to be cleaned and then never come back and get them because it's going to be $45 or whatever to clean it because it's down. they got to run through a special dry cleaning process. And so they find out how much it is, and they just walk out. They leave it. I had a good friend of mine that ran a dry cleaners for years, and he was getting all these king-size down comforters, you know, that somebody got for Christmas. They got it dirty because the cat peed on it or something. And they took it to clean. When they found how much it was, they, get, they didn't want it, and they left it. And he said, just pay me for what it, my cleaning bill. And so we were getting these $300 down comforters for like 40 bucks. And then we were using them in living history. So how about if I found one of them things and incorporated it into that? Dude, now you're cooking with grease. See, a pillow. I can fold up my field jacket and make a pillow. The money of the cowboy bedroll is the outer cover. That's the tough part. It has to be able to endure the wet, endure the mud, keep you dry. Then inside is just a pad and something for warmth. Right there. And it's about the same bulk. And when we're talking cowboy bedroll, we're not we usually not carrying this on our backs. Not for very far. Maybe a short little hike in or something. But these are going to be carried on ATVs, back of the car, canoes, kayaks, snow sleds, whatever. That's when these big winter camping bundles come in. Even the cowboys didn't carry them unless they were tied to a pack animal or carried it back in the chuck wagon because they're just so bulky. Yes, they're fantastic as far as a bed. I could afford to put even like, you know, Thermarest makes camp pads that are up to three inches thick now you're gonna pay for that but if I start out with this I could upgrade a little at a time I couldn't I picked that up as surplus the outer cover already had a blanket already had the thermos which I had picked up at a garage sale for 12 bucks you know that great big old huge thermos that somebody never used it was still in the factory wrap and it was 12 bucks to me so if you look around your little common man and a you know as my granddaddy used to say got a little scottish blood in you you'll find a way the concept of the cowboy roll is valid for ground pounding especially in today and atvs canoeing kayaking car camping etc being able to just go out and throw out the bedroom, lay under the stars and look up, not even have a tarp. Add a tarp to this, you're golden. See, it's just the mindset. But the money, the hard part, is that outer cover. So I recommend a MS Sleep System bivy cover. They're available by themselves on Surplus. Pick one of those up and then build your cowboy bedroll yourself. Ultimately, it's up to you how comfortable you want to be. Thank you very much for watching, guys. If you've enjoyed this content, please hit the like, share, and subscribe before you go. I'd really appreciate it. Till next time, guys, I'm Blackie wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.